So what we're talking about here is if you've got 100 visitors or 1,000 visitors, it's about getting more out of those customers when they land on your site. Um, it could be that you think it's good when you, somebody stayed on your site for five minutes when they've looked at three pages, or maybe it's good once they've gone to the contact form, made a booking, but you need to know what constitutes a successful visit to your site, and then try and work on it to try and get more successful visits out of that 1,000 people, 100 visitors, 1,000 visitors. It, it's basically trying to improve, even if it's by half a percent or one percent, the likelihood that they're going to go through and book with you, buy from you, or contact you. Basic things you can do, check your website works on all browsers. Uh, I have come across a couple of sites, uh, well, one in particular recently, where their contact form didn't work on Firefox. They didn't realize because they don't use Firefox, um, and yet probably 25% of their visitors came were using Firefox. Basic thing, so you should test it. The website there, browsershots.org, you can put your web address in and it will come back with screenshots of what your website looks like on those different browsers, going back older versions. Quick way of checking. Your web developer should have done it anyway, but you never know. It depends how old your site is as well. Improving the navigation is one of the things I like to look at more than anything. When people land on, you may have written a lot of lovely stuff about your, your business, and you're hoping everyone's going to read it, and they're going to want to come and buy from you or stay with you. Uh, but what you need to realize is that when people land on a website, you've got three, four seconds, really, to get a message across and then get them to do something else. They're not going to read all of your text and then say, oh, yeah, well, I'll have a look at this page now. You need to, when they land on there, you've got to give them really obvious options on where to go. Simple things like we've improved an online shop recently where it was very difficult to get to the online shop. You had to go up to the top right-hand corner. Yes, you could do it, but we actually put big links to the categories of food that was being sold. So that when people land on the home page very quickly, they can go in to the various pages. I call it like a um, where do you want to go today menu. So they haven't got to go to your drop downs, wait for them to hover down, pick what they want. You can then try and push people around the site to the pages you want them to go to. Um, if you've got something like a hot tub or you've got like good facilities for bikers and you've got a page all about that, don't talk about it and then expect somebody to go to your links at the top to try and find that page. When you're talking about it, put a link to that next step, to that next page. So you're trying to help people, make it more intuitive to get them around your website. One thing you can do as well, and this is again part of Google Analytics, um, and I'll try and pull this one up, there's a thing called in-page analytics. And what this does is it loads your website and then gives you a graphical overlay of exactly where people click when they land on your site. And is it where you want them to click? Um, you'll see there the most popular one is rooms, 32% out of those because it goes at a diagonal. So rooms is the most popular one. That's where people want to go. So what I might do, knowing that I, people want to go to the rooms, I would make sure that there's a really obvious link within the main text very quickly to link through to the rooms page. Because I know a third of the traffic probably wants to go there, so why don't I make it slightly easier for them? If I actually go through to the rooms page, then I can see on this page, where do they go? And you see I've got all the rooms there. Room one is the most popular room. Because people always click from left to right by default. This is, this is within Google Analytics, and it's called in-page analytics. Yeah. Um, so once you've got Google Analytics, you've got this as well. And on the previous slide, I've got a link to exactly where it is as well. So I might look at that and say, well, no wonder we're not getting any bookings for room seven, because only 0.9% of, of people actually look at it. So maybe I might then have a different promotion that promotes a certain room, features a room, rotates through different rooms to sort of spread the bookings out a bit more evenly. It may be, as you browse around, there's one page where people are more likely to go and book or to go to the contact page. So you might find they land on there and then they want to find out about your um, accommodation or then they want to look at the gallery. There'll be one page that they're probably more likely to convert to a customer. And you can find the route by just browsing through these that people are likely to take and then try and help them through that route. And even if you're trying to turn 1% more people to actually convert and be a customer, then it, it's getting more out of the customers you've already got, rather, rather than just keeping to try, getting more and more traffic. Just making the most of what you've got. This was a slide shot in case the internet wasn't working, which fortunately it is today. Um, and the link there at the bottom on Google Analytics tells you exactly where that feature is. It's in content and then in-page analytics. 
Does anyone who uses Google Analytics use goals? Yeah? Goals are when you say, if somebody lands on the contact form success page, then that's a goal achieved. If somebody makes a purchase, it's a goal achieved. If somebody goes on the website for five pages, sees five pages, it's a goal achieved. It's a way of indicating to Google Analytics whether a goal has actually been achieved, whether a visit was successful. 